Welcome to the VoiceBox channel. Today, we're unpacking how the voice works. Please subscribe to my channel and click the bell if you'd like to receive notifications when I post videos every week. The voice is a complicated instrument, let's be honest. And on top of that, we can't actually see what is happening in our instrument while we're singing. So there's a lot of mystery around how the voice actually works. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to kind of demystify a couple of the things that we talk about when we are talking about voice science. And when we are discussing the voice, we tend to break it up into three different systems. Scott McCoy wrote Your Voice and Inside View. And in that book, he talks about how all musical instruments, not just the voice, need three things in order to make sound. Those three things are a power source, a vibrator, and a resonator. In the voice, our power source is our breath. Now, let's take a beat here and figure out that when I say power source, it doesn't mean how strong or how loud your voice is. And while the breath is an important part of that, it is definitely not <laughs> the only source of our power. So when we say power source, it's more akin to how gasoline powers an engine. The gasoline is important fuel for the engine. Without that fuel, the engine isn't going to work. And that's the same with the voice. Without the fuel of our breath, the rest of the system is not going to work. The second thing that we're going to talk about in our voice system is the vibrator. And for our purposes as singers, the vibrator is our vocal folds. So vocal folds are located here in our larynx. When you swallow that structure that goes up and down, that's your larynx. I'll swallow right now. <laughs> My larynx just went up and down. So our vocal folds are inside of our larynx and there are two tissues that come together in this manner. There it is. <laughs> and it chops up the air from our lungs. So we had the power source, which is our breath, and then now it is being vibrated by our vocal folds that are, is chopping up that air into a pattern, and that pattern is a sound wave. Now, once we have a sound wave, it's going to travel through our vocal tract. And that is our resonator. So that's the third thing in the system that we need, right? Our resonator. So when we say our vocal tract, what we're talking about is from our vocal folds all the way through to our lips. So everything that the sound touches, touches in our body that is part of the vocal tract is a resonator. And a resonator is kind of an interesting thing because a resonator vibrates due to the vibrator acting upon it, right? So our vocal folds create that sound wave and then our vocal tract vibrates because of that sound wave. And we can change the shape of our vocal tract. In fact, we do it all the time. That's how we get consonants. That's how we get vowels, right? So my lips are moving and <laughs> that's part of me changing my vocal tract shape. And we are all different size people, right? So our vocal tract length is actually all different sizes and determined by how tall and how big and how, how much space there is in my neck, right? So we are so individual in that way. And that's where a voice teacher can really, really be helpful. Because what we're doing is we're tuning these three systems and we're balancing them in order to create the best sound that we can. So if one part of our system, say our resonator, right, our vocal tract is off, then the other two parts will try to compensate for that. And a voice teacher can step in and say, hey, you don't need to compensate for that. What we need to do is address that maybe the vowel that you're singing isn't appropriate for this pitch. So that is why I'm such a big advocate for a voice teacher, right? Not just because I am one, but because we need an outside ear to help us tune these three systems. So in future videos, we're going to really, really dive deep into these systems. And we're gonna talk about how they work 
and the implications that they have on our singing. But right now, we have just given ourselves a baseline, a common language that we can address and talk about when we're talking about those details, right? If you would like to come with me on that journey on uh, discovering more about the voice and getting into those details, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell if you'd like to receive notifications when I post videos every week. Thanks for watching. Now go sing.